And welcome back to this gorgeous, frosty, wintry, Christmassy morning on this Sunday, the 11th of December. Okay, so um, we've just had Team 1 get up and uh, do their presentation, and now we're going to go over to Team 2. Um, could I ask who's going to be the first person to talk on Team 2? Me. Oh, Phil. that will be you, Phil. So, Phil, as soon as I hear your dulcet tones, my friend, I will start the timer and not until. So, uh, good luck, Team 2. Good morning, what happened to... Where's Phil? I'm here. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Uh, we are DIK MP. And we are basically going to run through a few things with you, what we you, you should expect from us on our site. Now, I'm going to show you a bit of a, the site plan right now, which is... Oh, I think Phil cannot see the slides, can he? No, yeah, well, I can't, but obviously I drew him down thinner, so our site plan is basically... Sorry, sorry, can I do the introduction first, Because we before you start your bit? Yeah, better during the... Yeah, I'll do the introduction, then oh, sorry. I'll... All right, so uh, <clears throat> we are the uh, DKMP Construction and Development, and we will be undergoing the demolition of a brick-laid two-story factory building with an estimated duration of 16 months. And through this presentation, we would like to exhibit our commitment to health, uh, to quality, environment, and health and safety. Right, our project manager is uh, is Phil, the site manager fire and fire marshal Roman, site supervisor and first aider Yonuts, health and safety and mental health fire marshal and first aider Daniela, and quality assurance manager Dorin. Right, site plan. Here you go, Phil. Right, so our site plan is quite simple, really. We've, we've moved everything away from the building that's being demolished. And uh, basically, we, we, we've, we've only got one access. So I'm going to go through the site plan and <laughs> traffic management plus uh, where the cabins are going to be landed. So basically, when you come into our site, we're going to have to go through an office block, a uh, car park. So please be aware of unknown pedestrians. So not just site personnel, pedestrians who have never been on a site before in their life. So we're going to come off Holt Arch Road, straight through the car park, and the entrance, which will take the bushes out, will put gates up and barriers up all around the site. When you come in, it's going to be, the cabins are going to be on your right-hand side. So we're going to have four stack cabins, long ways. The two bottom ones, one's going to be a canteen with anything that you need in it apart from food, obviously, and a drying room. The two top ones are going to be a site office for the manager, and there's going to be a meeting room above the dry room, plus two toilets, one for women and one for men. Then if you're on your left-hand side, you will see an very fenced area, which will be tool stores, kosher area, so any petrol hazardous materials in the kosher area, please, and uh, fuel filling station, diesel. Uh, where you see the highlighted areas where it's um, like hazard lines, that's the turning circle for any Arctics that come in. Plus, you'll also see a smoking area <clears throat> next to the cabins, which is fenced off, so you cannot touch anybody. Um, our traffic management system is basically coming off Holt Arch Road, 
bearing in mind of any pedestrians, it's going to be five miles an hour. If you see any pedestrians, please stop. Uh, if you're not stopped anyway by a marshal. When you come into sight, basically go straight to the site office and sign in. There'll be no ones on site parking to reduce hazards because we don't need any more hazards than there's going to be by taking the building down. That's it from me. Over to Daniela. Hi. Um, so I'm going to run through with you just now the accident plan for the site. Um, so there's different types of accidents that you can occur in any site or any situation. So first off, we're going to look at what to do in the event of a minor accident. So by a minor accident, we see mean something that's like a cut or a minor accident to planter machinery. So something that's just been scratched. You don't really need to do too much with it. But if it's something that's happened to yourself, you should go to the first aid room, get it dressed. And then if you're safe to do so, you can return to work. Um, for anything that's a damage to machinery or plant, you should report the damages. All of the damages or incidents should be reported and recorded. Um, and then we're going to look at major accidents. So in the event of a major accident, you call for help if required. You should allow the appointed person to assess. So the appointed person at this moment is myself. Um, if medical attention is required, a safe method of transport should be provided and an accident should also be reported and recorded. Work should then be stopped until it's advised safe to return to work. If a situation is life-threatening, you should dial 999, notify your AP first aider, have open lines of communication with emergency services and follow all instructions. You should also allow for safe access to site for emergency services and the accident should be reported and recorded to the AP. Apart from those um, accidents that we've just kind of went through, um, there's external factors that we need to consider. So the likes of road traffic accidents, fallen trees, flood and burst in riverbanks, an aviation emergency given that the airport's clear nearby, um, explosions of gases, hazardous materials, damages to overhead lines, uh, weather, storms, acts of nature, unauthorised access to sites, block drains, burst drains, emergencies in adjacent riverside cafes or spillage of hazardous materials. There are separate policies in place for all of those um, situations. Okay, what are we on to now? Fire, fire, fire. So um, we have put in place the emergency evacuation plan for the site. So in the event of the fire, obviously you should follow the action plan that's in place. Um, the appointed person for the, the fire is myself. So there's different situations where you have your during working hours. So during working hours, it's myself that will, will deal with it. And out with working hours, it should be the on-site security. So in the event of a fire that you should um, evacuate and follow the policy. Um, the appointed person in the event of a fire should pick up the, the register, the signing book, and everybody should report to the assembly point. The assembly point is detailed on our site plan. Um, I've also made a note of the emergency exit points, which are located within the, the building that's going to be demolished, because obviously before demolition, there will be workers in there. Um, there will also be fire extinguishers, but they should only be used by trained personnel. Um, once everybody's at the assembly point, the AP will be responsible for communicating with the, the fire services and only when it's advised <laughs> to do so should you re-enter the building, building site. OK. Yep. Um, I've also made a note of the, the key locations for the gas, the the, the fuse, the shuttle valve, the fire alarm panels. Um, also make a note that smoking is only in the designated areas. The records of the 
the maintenance for the fire alarm systems detections will all be recorded and kept in the, the site office. Okay, me again. Okay, so we're now going to talk about mental health. So we have put a mental health policy in place and I have also been trained in mental health and so I therefore I will be the mental health officer. So we're going to, as part of our um, mental health wellbeing policy, we're going to conduct workshops for employees on coping with mental health and how to communicate positively with others. This will be part of their induction. The trained welfare officer, myself, is going to take an active role in monitoring staff, so looking out for key signs and being aware. We're also going to offer fresh fruit and water on site. This is just to promote healthy uh, wellbeing. We're going to also send out weekly emails to employees with details of who to contact and support because it's not always something that people feel comfortable talking about. We're also going to promote a uh, discounted gym membership for staff and we're going to have company arranged activities like walking groups, team bonding sessions and football. Um, the HR welfare officer is available during working hours and a safe space is provided to talk if anybody needs it. We've also got quiet areas provided during break times and frequent breaks are requested. That's all from me. Okay, so now we're going to talk about storage. So in the storage area, we'll have like all the materials that we're going to need. And um, we'll ha also have a course material storage cage and a flammable and explosive cage. We will have a proper height not to have need for board rails or step ladders so that it will be safer. We will plan all the deliveries to keep the amount of materials at minimum. So we're going to keep things in a stored organized system so that we don't create any problem in case of a heavy wind condition and so on so that everybody around us can get ahead with their usual schedule. In the storage, you also find a spill kit, an extra spill kit to prevent damage for the environment and fire damage. So that's it for me. So next, guys, your notes. Thank you, guys. My name is Onut. I'm uh, the supervisor of the site. And uh, today I'm going to go through on the two, two important steps with you. So. Regarding permission and notification, we have on the permission including an F10 notification submitted and approved, section 80 from demolition notice, asbestos removal notification, planning permission approval, permission from the environment agency. Permission or prior approval may be required to demolish a building. It depends on number of factors, including type, size of building, where it's located. Also, we want to go through we now regarding permission notification again for more safety rules we've decided to close down the road temporary temporary near the our site road this name is bramley road also we decide to, to close another one just for more safety rules same we'll do for the fat pet along the site as this very busy area yes and uh for this, just a second. Yeah, that's it for the permissions. Now, if we're going on a, uh, just a second, uh, I missed something, uh, Dorian, please. So notification regarding here, notification will be sent to Riverside Coffee, existing uh, office, environment agency, local authorities. Thank you. Okay, now regarding signs uh, signage, which is a very important on the side. This guidance is for employers, duty holders, and other who have responsibility for the control of workplace, site, and premises. Safety signs and signals are required where despite putting in place all other relevant measures, significant risk of the health and safety of employers and other remains. Signs must be clear, legible, and should be used to identify action that are prohibited. Example, no access, safeguards that must to be followed. Example, ear protection must be worn. Warning of a hazard, example, corrosive materials, and to direct towards fire exit equipment on first aid equipment. 
signals must be clear, legible, and should be used to identify action that are prohibited. Sorry, said that. Uh, yes. Safety signage, there are mandatory requirement on any construction site. We have the six type of signs, prohibition signs, mandatory signs, warning signs, danger signs, emergency information sign, and fire signs. Now, regarding uh, our project, because we are doing a demolition, we have, uh, which I mentioned, two important hazards. One of them is asbestos, as is an old building. And the second one, the girl was contaminated with uh, cadmium and lead. When material contains asbestos are disturbing damages, fibers are released into the air. When these fibers are inhalated, they can cause serious diseases. These diseases will not affect you immediately. They often take long time to develop it, but once diagnostic, it's often too late to do anything. Regarding the contamination ground, so contamination ground in land where substances in or on the land, it may actually or potentially hazardous to people's health. Excess heavy metals in soil could pollute the environment and potentially damage human health through accumulation. This is for my presentation today. I've done. Thank you. Right. Uh, <clears throat> oh, sorry. Oh. Sorry. Yeah, uh, I messed that. Also, we are going to display in our site some of the most important documents. Health and safety law poster, health and safety policy, employer's liability insurance, first aider, fire evacuation arrangements. I talk about that. Thank you. Hi guys, uh, I'm just gonna go with you uh, through some security, site security. Um, the construction uh, site security is projected to, to protect the site and workers on it. So we need to make sure we're protecting our people, uh, machines, tools from the site. So uh, construction site in UK are, former, uh, are far from safe. So approximately 800 million a year of theft. So, which means 92% of construction professionals have experienced theft weekly, monthly, or yearly. So, by looking at this high number, uh, we need to make sure that we're hiring the right company to do the job, save, uh, to protect ours, uh, our site as safe as possible. Uh, there will be a high number of vehicles or machineries on site on a daily basis. Uh, we we're gonna ensure that we got uh, CCTV cameras on the side at many points around the side uh, to have access. Uh, we're going to have a security guy on our entrance and he's gonna uh, have the register book as well. So uh, everyone who's entering on the side will be registered with a ID number as well. And he will make sure that uh, we're not allowing any alcohol, any drugs on the site as well. Uh, security, we're going to have a security gate guy uh, as well. Make sure that only authorized uh, vehicles can go in or authorized people must, uh, must enter on the premises. Uh, we're going to make sure that we've got all uh, fences around our site to secure and to protect from outsiders to go on our side. We're also going to have a night shift uh, security. Uh, and yeah, that's it. Uh, we're going to have a, a back plan uh, in case if something going wrong. So we may have an extra guy which will be our security. We may hire him from the agency and to, to provide the security on site. Uh, welfare assessment. Uh, we're gonna go through welfare on site. We'll be provided with uh, sanitary convinces. 
suitable and uh, sufficient, uh, separated rooms and provided for men and women. Uh, they will be clean and ventilated, washing base and dryers on it. We're also going to provide with changing rooms, lockers. Um, our changing room will be provided with sitting and facilities to dry clothing if needed. Um, we're going to have separate changing rooms for women and men, and also providing with the lo lockers and changing rooms for any person who wants to keep the special clothes on it. We're also going to be providing a canteen. Uh, our side is going to have 20 people, so our canteen is going to have 25 chairs, uh, table and chairs. Uh, we're going to have two microwaves. We're going to have two fridges, a toaster, a teapot, and uh, drinking, uh, drinking water with uh, suitable cups as well. Thank you, Derek. All right. For the next part, we're gonna <clears throat> we're gonna present some of some of the site rules, uh, which uh, you know we're gonna implement on our site. Uh, site uh, rules. Uh, site site access rules. Right. First one uh, will be uh, people cannot access the site, cannot start work without an uh, without an induction. Uh, you must always report to the site office to sign in and out. This includes visitors, workers, and drivers. Respect all safety uh, signs across all uh, across the site at all times. When entering or leaving the site, uh, use only the designated pedestrian walkway. Smoking uh, is only allowed in the designated area. Uh, PP rules. On this side, we're going to implement a five-point PP uh requirement right uh hard hat gloves protected glasses steel toe caps work boots and high vis vest ppe must be worn at all times while on site additional ppe might be required for specific task the which will be specified in the risk assessment always ensure that the correct ppe is worn and that is that that fits and is that is correctly. So the employee must must uh, the contractor must assure that has been uh, provide the correct PPE. Contractors must uh, provide appropriate PPE for their workers. Uh, the main thing will be no if you have no glasses or no boots, no hat, no high vis or no glasses, you will really not be working on the site. Uh, behavior rules. Uh, respect. Uh, Respect safety rule signs and instructions that might be like coming from toolbox talks or construction side rules. Uh, keep your work areas tidy. Dispose uh, of waste in the appropriate bins provided. Uh, use and look after the welfare facilities. Never engage in uh, horseplay or throw objects. No food or switch rings allowed on site. Please use the welfare facilities. Also, no spinning. Do you have a bit of technical difficulties here? All right. Let me go back to the. I'm just gonna keep it like this. Uh, equipment rules: Never tamper with equipment without authorization. Never operate plant equipment or machinery unless you are trained and authorized to do so. Check the equipment before use. Never work without safe access. Never climb unsecured ladders. Never remove scaffold ties or board or tamper with the scaffold structures unless you are trained and authorized to do so. Uh, security rules: Keep the gates of cabins and vehicles locked when not in use. Do not leave tools, equipment, or plant, plant unattended. Keep uh, in secure storage. Uh, remove keys and immobilize, immobilize all plant and equipment when not in use. No children or unauthorized persons are allowed to enter the site. You must comply with the random back searches when leaving the site. Uh, reporting rules. Report all accidents and near hits. Report all equipment defects and take uh, and take our views. Uh, report all unsafe 
uh, unsafe acts or conditions. Always ask when in doubt. Mistakes cannot can cost cost lives. Uh, signed action. So the signed action will be taking place from nine a.m. Monday to Friday, uh, in the in the meeting room. Uh, the rotation the induction will be done uh, on a rotation basis by uh, all the managers. By one of the managers will be on a rotation. Uh, <laughs> Site uh, management details. The induction will provide new workers with information about the management of the site. They uh, would know, they would know uh, who to report to and who is responsible for what on the site. They will be informed who managers, who the managers are, the first aiders, supervisors, fire marshal, traffic marshals, and they will be given their contact information. Uh, project details. We will provide information about the project, where the work is going to be done, what type of work, and what. Uh, and any possible dangers. Also, also, we will provide information about the parts of the site that might be out of bounds for certain workers or in certain situations. Site-specific risks. Uh, even though most workers are aware of the risk involved in the wrong activities, we will take in consideration the fact that uh, that might not be the case for uh, workers of different trades. So we will inform new starters of all the risks that may be involved while, while working on site. Site rules. During the induction, we will engage with the workers to do our best to make sure everyone understands this, uh, the site rules and knows why these, these rules are in place. We also developed a, a carding system for rewarding and reprimanding workers' attitude towards the site rules from green to white, from green to white, yellow, and red. Green rewarding good, good health and safety work with, with a voucher or something similar. White for min, minor offenses, verbal warning. Uh, yellow for more serious offenses. Uh, leave the site. They will have to leave the site for the day and come back to, uh, next day for induction. Red red card for serious uh, offenses. Point is his uh, his or someone else's life in danger. Immediately uh, will be escorted off the site and brand from future future work with uh, with us. Uh, if somebody uh uh says two yellow cards that will result in a yellow and a red card. Uh, site procedures. We will be talking about the procedures regarding sign in, security measures, permits, accident reporting, PPE, hearing uh, hearing protection zones, housekeeping, toolbox talks, safety briefings, and make sure that the works the workers know what is expecting of them while they're on site. Uh, site layout. Keeping in mind that sites constantly change throughout the project, the layout most likely will also change. From scaffold adaption to parts of the site being altered, we will inform the workers uh, of possible changes. Also, we will familiarize, familiarize uh, the workers with the location of welfare facilities, first aid provisions, escape routes, master points, and etc. Uh, means we will also inform the workers when and where toolbox talks, plan training, and any other meetings might take place. Uh, last but not least, we will show a short video about the past incident that will help us highlight the risk, the risk of not respecting the site or health and safety rules. Follow by asking some questions, answering any questions they might have. Our goal is zero harm. That might be the that, that will be the video we will show. You know, during the induction, right? Uh, document control. This is a list of uh, all the documents that we already have in place, and we are aware that we might need. Uh, we, we might be required to uh, to uh, add some more for the sake of time keeping. Time keeping. I'm not going to go through every permit, but everything is uh right here. Right. Anything else? Uh, we will be we will be using JWS as our waste management company. They will take care of a ha of any hazards and general waste recycling. We also have made all walkways all, all flat to reduce slips and trips. Everybody. Yeah, we've also made them out of um site bond, so that yes. really, really, really does reduce. Yes, the risk of slip. Uh, are stored in uh, dispensers next to the canteen door and drying rooms. The demolition team will be using the dust uh, suppression to keep dust levels low. We will have a first aid station in the full area and also in the demolition area. 
We also have fire prevention points throughout the site. We will have uh, known on-site parking to reduce the risk of traffic on site. Uh, we also bring uh, in specialists <laughs> to remove the Japanese knock, uh, knotweeds. Uh, a point, uh, a point. We will appoint an asbestos removal company. Appoint a contractor for removal. For removal, Jap yeah. Uh, we we will appoint a contractor for removal of cadmium and uh, lead removal, and we will appoint a contractor for removal of parts of the existing hedge. Yes, that 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 is it. Thank you very much. Any questions? Well, as is tradition, before we go into questions, let's give that a blinking round of applause. <laughs> uh, bang on, 30 minutes to the second. To the, the second. second. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> See, that's why I skipped the documents here. Right. Okay. Could I encourage <laughs> the first question then, please? Yes. Um, I've got a question. Um, how many entrants do you have on site? One. 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 Um, Which so private marketable. vehicle, private vehicles, and NGV vehicles are coming together. Yeah, even deliveries. Private. No, we don't have private vehicles on site. You don't know. Okay. We only um, have deliveries. Let's suppose uh, an unplanned delivery come on site. Yeah, unplanned delivery. How what measurement do you do you guys take, and who do you report to? They will they come back the when uh, the when uh, the time was set. So they, have traffic the marshals they will leave the site and come back well. when uh, to the same time frame. Okay, that's fair enough. You did you did, men, you did mention that building was pretty old and you think about the asbestos in it. Will you be doing any surveys? Sorry? That question. No, yes. the, the asbestos survey was mentioned, yeah. Yeah, and we, we have a, we have a contractors. We we will have a contractor spe uh, spe specifically employed for that bay. For serving well, and asbestos. taking care of the asbestos. Well, if, is that so? If 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 the asbestos is found, there is asbestos. There's already there asbestos, asbestos there. We know uh, that, but we don't know if they're yeah. in the walls. We already right. have the contract and dealing with that. Is that is that mean your operatives will have to get asbestos awareness training? They will already no. have it in place yeah. for the employees. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, the, 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 the demolition company will <clears throat> deal with that. We will. We will not be touching our employees will not be touching that apart from the special uh, contractor cool cool you've also That's mentioned you've got you've got 20 people on side and you've got um one female and one male toilet no oh, no no, one, one. no we have a, a block uh, yeah a block oh sorry okay a block a toilets for male oh, and a block of toilets for female fair enough thank you um, just going on to the toilet thing, what are you going to do if a disabled person comes on site or a visitor? What uh, toilet facilities are they going to use? Uh, if, you, if you checked the, let me just go to the slide where it shows exactly the layout. It shows that there, it has a separate, uh, it has the rail for, for, for disabled uh, people. For disabled, yeah. It does have a, a step. Up to the male and female toilets. Yeah. Yeah. Or we can also install a ramp if needed. For this table. Okay. Yes. Um, but these type already... these types of toilets already have a pre installed uh pre installed ramps. Uh, ramp. Ramps on it. Okay. Um also I realized obviously you've got your cosh container. Um is that gonna be kept separate from the rest or is it gonna be with the others? No, it's, it is separate on the drawing. It is separate, yeah. yeah sorry, guys. It's I, separated. Only, I could only say the layout the of the. I'm just, just asking the questions. Yeah. You're um... just picking now, aren't you, Tom? Also, just another one on. Um, you mentioned that you have got security, but not how, how many um, and if it is going to be 24 7. We did mention we have one yeah, security we have, guy. We have sorry, night shift. Can I just finish? Shift. Oh, yeah. well, this was done only with one person. Wait, wait, Tom, Tom, sorry. Uh, what was uh, that? We got, the question? We got security guy on the side. For no, 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 leave, sorry. And leave registering the, the name, the ID. Levis. We have a security guy on a gate. Yes. Yeah, we and we're going to have Tom security. finish the question. Just, just wait for the question, please. Huh? Sorry, guys. Right. It's a, I know that you mentioned that you've got security guys and you did mention the night shift, but nothing was mentioned whether or not it was a 24 7. Yeah, security. I said we're not. And how many security guards there was going to be in place? 
uh, night shift is going to be with two security guys on the shift. Okay, uh, I've night. got a question. Let's suppose the delivery comes up. Are the security officer trained? As a to to uh, to I mean escort the delivery on delivery, site. The delivery no, the is gonna be from, from eight to six. Guys, so after, after, after six o'clock, we're not gonna expect any delivery to come on site. No, no, no. That's, you're not getting my point. Um, yeah, but that's down to the traffic. Yeah, but that's the point enough. because it's down to the traffic. Guys, market. guys, why doesn't one person answer the question? So the person who's done that topic can they answer, can answer the question? Yeah. Thank okay. you. Okay. Yeah. So what's the question again? So the question again is, um, are the security guard trained as a traffic marshal if in case a delivery comes on site or has to be reversed? Uh, AGV, let's does. suppose that GV heavy from, vehicles from eight, from 8 to 6, we've got our traffic marshals on site and we don't expect any delivery coming after 6 p.m. because uh, our security guards are not uh, trained to be traffic marshals. Okay, fair enough. I've got one more as well. Okay, go um, go on. Do you do you need to be CSCS approved to be on site or not? Of course. Yeah, of course. Okay. I've got a last question. Um if the CCTV, let's suppose the CCTV security system fails on site, who who does that call goes to or who the 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 that must be reported to? The security uh, provider. The security providers. Okay, fair enough. And is that yeah? Okay. The can we just go back? Can we just go back to your list of site rules, please? Um, yes. I, I know there was quite a lot. Sorry, you had a lot of slides dedicated to it, didn't you? So uh, yeah. You just you were just saying there that CSCS is is a. Can we just see it on your site rules then that CSCS cards is a site rule? Because you seem quite uh, adamant that it. You seem quite adamant that it is. Oh, it's not a site rule. It's not well, not that was the question, possible. wasn't it? Have you got oh, CSCS? Oh, yeah, that's what I was asking. Yeah, ah, no, it's not part yeah. of the side rule. It's part so of I, the... didn't, I didn't think I saw it as a side rule. So the answer is no, then. Well, in that situation, if you've got a visitor coming to site, they don't technically have to be CSCS registered. I said for work, I did. I did oh, say sorry, that. Tom, I never CSCS heard that. For work. That's a rule we will impl implement before any work takes place. And on that I, note, Daniela, I, that's not uh, going to be a rule. It's going to be a requirement of the. Okay, Dorian. <laughs> okay, it's going to be a legal requirement <laughs> or insurance requirement. Okay, <laughs> let's uh, let's end it there because that's just got over uh, just over six minutes. We've sported with a few extra questions there, but I think it was worth it.